Airlifting the IM-99A missile, like marriage, demands a certain amount of togetherness between Air Force and contractor. Two birds per airlift are unloaded by Boeing people and offloaded by Air Force people. In between is an airborne MATS C-124. One loading operation is a mirror image of the other, and similar accidents can happen at both places. Let's look at a few of the safety hazards that have to be taken into account when bow marks are shipped. In the July 1960 issue of Aerospace Safety, mention was made of the second Air Force Industry Conference on Missile Safety and of plans to create Air Force Industry Accident Review Boards. If future emphasis is to be placed on such joint action, much can be gained from a positive, realistic, above all, cooperative approach to safety problems. Cooperation is even more important where the problem area is double-ended, where both contractor and military personnel perform the same job and are subject to the same safety hazards. Therefore, in the following discussion of one such area, that of Bomark transportation, any references to slip-ups on the military end of the airlift are meant to be strictly nonpartisan and objective. As long as there have been near accidents, it's better to use them as a guide for future safety than to pretend they never happened. As this article goes to press, the safety record of Bomark airlifts can be summed up in four words. So far, so good. You may recall, however, the optimist who jumped off the top of a New York office building. He was heard to yell the same thing as he passed the 20th floor. So far, so good. This is not to imply, necessarily, that IM-99A on and off loading crews have been living on borrowed time, nor, necessarily, that the end of the winning streak, when it comes, will be as tragic as impacting against a concrete surface at 175 or so miles per hour. But then again, let's look at some of the near misses. One crew member got his foot run over by the aircraft loading trailer, but he was wearing safety shoes, as he was supposed to. Once a lifting cable failed and a missile was dropped about six inches during an offload operation, nothing happened, no explosions, no mangled humid extremities, because explosive items like squibs and initiators are shipped separately, and because the hands and feet of loading personnel were clear of the danger area. Once a failed pin in the aircraft hoist gear sent a missile and trailer rumbling down the loading ramp at a clip which might have been compared favorably with airborne cruise speed to anyone in the way, but nobody luckily was in the way. Everyone had been paying attention to the 2-2's oft-repeated warning. Repeated, and even dozen times, to be exact. Keep personnel away from down ramp end of trailer as it is being pulled up or rolled down loading ramp. Still, if you took a dim and rigorous view of these three accidents, you'd conclude that personnel were only practicing about half the safety they should have been. Otherwise, we wouldn't be using the words near miss. Good safety practices, we know, are redundant, just as there are two or three different ways to trigger an ejection seat so there are extra, redundant, insurance features associated with airlifting the IM-99A 